In this video, we're going to be creating a project that will receive user input and print some output. I'm starting from our folder where our project was created because maybe you shut down the machine, you went to have dinner, it's been days since you were last in Visual Studio. And so I just want to show you how you can relaunch your project from the file system and you know not have to go into Visual Studio and source it. So I can just go back to the file system, find the solution and double click. That will launch Visual Studio and that will relaunch our project or solution with our project and everything that we were doing. So every time you go ahead and you create code and you save and you relaunch your solution, it may relaunch with all of the tabs you had open or the code files and all the projects and everything that you had. Now let's go about putting a new project inside the solution so that we can test or write a new program. So this was our hello world program. Notice I had a comment here, I had some static text or some random text that was giving problems. I just commented it out, but that's it for the hello world so let's move on to a new one so i'm going to right click the solution note not the project this is the project i'm right clicking the solution so i'm or oh, notice that it's really just a config file right so i'm right clicking the solution i'm going to click add and then i'm going to say new project then it brings back this menu that we should be familiar with, this dialog box that we should be familiar with asking, okay, what kind of project do you want this time? So I'm going to select once again, console app.net core, click next. And then this time I want the project name to be input, output. So input, output, lots of spelling errors. So you want to make sure that you write it properly, right? Naming is important. And then I click create. And then I get a brand new code file. So notice it's kind of standard to come with hello world. Hello world is probably the first programming phrase that most people will ever learn when they're learning a new language, how to print hello world to the screen. But that being said, I just want us to take some time out to appreciate what is happening here. So notice I have a new program.cs file. I still have my existing one. And then so as not to make the mistake, and let's assume that they were both identical. They were both very new. Both of them had the same code in it. How do I know which one belongs to which project? So each time you have a console application or project, you're going to get a program.cs file, and it's going to come with a main function. And let's just say it's standard for it to say hello world. At least we've seen that with the .NET Core template. We can use this drop down list to look at which project it is in. So this program.cs file belongs to the hello world project. If I go to the next one, you see that it belongs to the input output project. If I close them both, and I'll just close this file, that's a project file, and I have no files open, then from the solution explorer, I can specifically go to which project I want and then select the program.cs file. All right, so that's how you can manage multiple projects and appreciate where what file is coming from so you don't make mistakes because you don't want to be writing um, input output stuff inside of hello world program.cs. And then when you're running, you're wondering why is your code not working or why isn't it detecting the code that you wrote? And that's just because you wrote it in the wrong program.cs file. So you want to be very careful and very attentive. Um, and as you build more and more applications, even more advanced applications, you're going to have multiple projects. So you just want to be very careful and sure where each file is. Now let's get started. I did say that we wanted to write something to get user input and then print back to the screen. So let me just remove hello world. So we're going to be learning a few things here. We're going to be learning about one variables two, how to prompt for inputs, receive it from the user and then three, how to print it back to the screen. So let's get started with variables and I'll just put a comment. Variables. A variable is like a little container, all right? So when we want data from the user, we have to create a container and then we use that container to store the value that the user gave us. So for instance, if I wanted a name, then I need a variable and I'm, it makes sense to just call it name. The name of my container for somebody's name is name, all right? And then further to that, I need to define a type. So a type means the type of data that I'm expecting. So if I want somebody's name, then that is a text because they'll be writing letters, right? 
So anything that's letters is a text type or a string. So in C Sharp, we call text types string. When you want text from somebody, you need a pocket or that container, and it needs to be able to store what we call a string or text, all right? So let's start off with how we declare a variable. I will first define the data type. So C Sharp has a lot of data types and it's good to know when to use which one. So I just gave us a case study for the data type string. So I say string and then I give it the name. So I want some variable that is called string, oh, it's called name, sorry, and it is of data type string. You would have already noticed that you have something called string and args earlier. So that was the data type and args would be your variable name. So in this case, we're making our own variable, telling it that, okay, declare a pocket in memory and call it name. And it should be able to store anything that is a text. So I want name, that's one. So I'm going to say declare variables. And then you can have multiple variables. You can have as many variables as you want, right? But then let's just keep it simple. So we want name. And then I'm going to want to store what the user is entering into the console in my pocket called name. So I need to assign the data being collected from the console screen inside of name. So whenever we want to store data inside of this container, we say container name or variable name. So this is name is equal to, and then if I'm receiving input, I'm going to call my console. So we get this class console. Remember that when we were printing to screen, we had console as a class name. So console once again, and then I say dot, and then this is what we call IntelliSense where it's telling me all of the potential things I can do with my console class. So the thing I want to do this time, last time we were writing line. So if you scroll on, you see write line and you see write. But this time I want to read line. So you'll see that they have an option that says read line. So I can double click that. And then the red line is appearing because it's saying, okay, I see read line, but the context, the syntax is not correct. And that's because it's a function. So I need my open and close parentheses. Then I can use my semicolon. So I did say we would pay attention to the semicolon. Every line that you write must end with a semicolon. There are exceptions, but for now, let's just follow that rule. Every line that you write must have a semicolon. So we'll see the exceptions as we go along and really and truly it's just a matter of practice to get comfortable with when to use your semicolon and when not to. Now, after we've gotten the name, then we want to print it back to the screen. So then I go to the next line. So this is, and let me just put the comments as I go along, getting value from input or let me say yeah getting and storing getting and storing value from input all right so that's what we're doing in this line then the next line is printing value or values to console screen so we've gotten the value and we've stored it and now we want to print it back. So the cool thing is that I can store it, I can change the value, and I can always manipulate whatever is in here before I print it back. And that's the value of having the, the variable. So now I want to print back to screen, and we, did, we printed the screen already. We did print hello world. So we can just follow that same pattern, and we say console dot, and remember to print was right line and see IntelliSense is helping me, right line. And then it's a function, so I need my parentheses and then they're code hinting me and telling me that, okay, what you need inside here is a string value. So we did put hello world inside quotation marks and that's what a string is, it's text, like I said. So whenever we want text, we need to open and close quotation marks and then we can type anything we want, any alphanumeric sequence, any special characters we want once they're inside the quotation marks. C Sharp will kind of say, well, that is static. I'm not supposed to touch that because that is what my master being you wants me to print. All right. So I'm going to remove this and I'm going to, so I can put the sentence, you know, anything I want. We did say hello world last time, but what I want to print is not 
static. I don't want to determine what I'm printing here because I'm receiving something from the user and I want to print what the user gave me. So instead of using my quotation marks and defining, you know, this is what we call static, right? So once it's static, it can't be changed again. So if I type hello world, then hello world will be printed. If I type my name manually, then obviously I am bypassing the, whatever was inserted through the console because anybody can come and use this program, put in that name, and this will always just print Trevor Williams regardless of what value is inside name. So what we want to do is print the value inside of name to the screen. And the way that is done is to actually put the variable name. So console.write line, and then we put in the variable. And notice once again, we need a string value, but we do have a string variable. So there are two ways to get the string. We can use it as static, meaning whatever I put here will never change until I come back in the code and change it. Or I can use a variable of type string. All right, so I just declared a variable of type string, received some string input from some user, and now I'm going to print it back to the screen. So once again, every line ends with a semicolon, and you see Visual Studio semi semicolon is expected. So I put that there, and then I just run. Now, notice that the start still has the hello world. So if I run, it's still just going to print hello world. It's just going to execute the hello world program. We have multiple projects, and at this point, I want to run input output and not hello world. So what I need to do is change the startup project from hello world to input output. So I'm going to right click input output and then select the, op the option that says set, start, set as startup project. So I click that. And then notice that this is now bold. So before, Hello World was bold. Now this one is bold. So that's a nice quick way to know which one is a startup project. And the notice that contextually the start button text also changed. So I can just click input output. All right, so my program is started and it's just going to sit there with a blank screen, just blinking and waiting. So what it is doing is waiting on the read line. So it already declared name. You're not going to see a visual cue of the variable being declared. You're going to, for every read line, it's just going to wait until there's some input followed by an enter key. So if I put, and let me put a fictitious name, Archibald Gordon, and then I press enter, then it executes and you see Archibald Gordon printing back to screen. Now, this is not very intuitive because it was just blank. It was just waiting. What exactly was it waiting for? So it's always good to give your user a visual cue to say, please enter your name or something like that, right? So what I'm going to do is above this line where I am receiving data, I'm going to put a console write line to print to screen the prompt. So we'll call this a prompt. So console dot write line open braces or open parentheses. And then I want the static text that says, enter your name. So I'm saying, please, <clears throat> I can say, please enter your name. You can, whatever your prompt is. So obviously whenever you run a program or you use a program, when you're filling out a form on the internet, whatever it is you're doing on a computer, they always give you a visual cue to say, this is the data I'm expecting to from you right now. So I'm saying enter your name and then this line needs to be followed by a semicolon. And then I'm going to wait for you to enter your name. And then once you have done that, I'm going to print your name back to the screen. So let's try that again. All right. So now it says enter your name because it ran that console right line, enter your name. And now it's waiting for me to enter some value so that it can store it inside my variable and then print it back to screen. So this time I'm going to use Kimberly Fagan and then I'm going to press enter. And then you notice it printed Kimberly Fagan back to screen. So now it's still not very intuitive because I don't know which one is which. Like, okay, I'm looking at the console. I see Kimberly Fagan and I just see it repeated. What, what is the repetition for? It's not very intuitive. So you always want to put in visual cues to your users so that they know exactly what they're looking at at each point. So I'm just going to close this console. And then what I'm going to do is 
put in another console right line or put in more text in this console right line to make sure that contextually you know exactly what you're looking at. So what I'm going to do is add another console right line and then this time I'm actually going to do console right. So you have console dot and you have right line but you also have right. So I'm going to do a right and show you the difference between the right and the right line. So right is going to say your name is and then semicolon and then we're writing once again to the console the name that was entered so let's try that again all right so now we say enter your name so okay this time it is paul bishop and then we press enter and then we see your name is colon paul bishop now notice that when we did console dot right line it automatically went to the next line and waited for text. When we did console.write, it just did it in one line and then whatever else we wanted is still in that line. So that's the difference between write and write line. Write line automatically, it's almost like you type a sentence in Microsoft Word and you press enter and you go to the next line. That's what write line does for you automatically. It just puts the next block of text in the next line automatically. However, write will not make that break. It will just, any other string that is to be printed will just be printed in the same line until that line, you know, it, it, it's, the text wraps, uh, you know, we all should know what word wrapping is. So until the text wraps around the screen, that's how write works. So that's the difference between console.write and console.write line. So that's it for input output. So let's just do a quick review. One, we learned about declaring variables. Once again, there are many data types that variables can have. We're just keeping it simple. We're just getting started. So I'm just using string where I collect some text and store inside some variable called name. Then I prompt the user for them to enter their name. And then once they enter it, so this is how we get input from the console, we automatically assign it to our variable. Having gotten and stored that value from the user, we then proceed to say, your name is, so we're printing back some static sentence that's giving them a visual cue as to what the data is that we're printing. So we're saying, your name is, colon, this text will never change unless I change it in the program, but then we dynamically printed whatever name was entered because we're printing back the value in the variable. In the next lesson, we're going to go through some more data types in C-sharp and look at the requirements between collecting data from the console for these different data types and printing them back and what conversions need to be done.